Yeah, I think uh, we will start jumping in. Uh, thank you very much for all uh, for joining the uh, uh, fourth uh, pre-Congress activity of the 134th International Medical Congress of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. I welcome you to this uh, stroke unit care for clinicians workshop organized by the um, SLMA expert committee on medical rehabilitation. Uh, so this is the final day of the Zoom lectures and this will be followed by uh, the workshop tomorrow morning. So we will come all to join the workshop tomorrow morning that would be commenced at nine and would continue until 1.30, I think. Uh, the, uh, because of the prevailing situation of the country, though we are intended to have, a, a, have an in-person workshop initially, uh, we are compelled to change it to a virtual one. So we invite all of you to join virtual from wherever that you are, and the link will be shared with you. And uh, it will be webcast from the auditorium, Sri Lanka Medical Association. Uh, the, um, uh, at the end of uh, uh, this thing, uh, the, we would be, uh, there is a hard copy, the book that is uh, printed, and uh, there would be a per diem uh, that we will have to deliver to you as well as a certificate. Uh, so we welcome all of you to uh, uh, join with us and much later we would contact you to find out ways and means of delivering the book and the book, uh, the hard copy of that book. Uh, so let me uh, invite Dr. Champika Gunawadana, the consultant neurologist uh, at the uh, Ratnapura Hospital, uh, teaching hospital Ratnapura to talk to you on post-stroke complications and prognostication. Over to Champika. Okay, madam, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And uh, uh, it is a great pleasure indeed to uh, take part in this uh, uh, pre congress workshop and the lecture series on stroke uh, rehabilitation and stroke establishment of stroke care for physicians. And uh, uh, so, I will proceed with my lecture. I'm supposed to talk on post stroke complications. Uh, this is a, the whole lecture series is based on the stroke rehabilitation and development of stroke, stroke care unit. So, post stroke complication is one of the key components when you look at the stroke rehabilitation, the rehabilitation process. Uh, so, we need to know when we start with how to start uh, how to manage acute stage and then how to start uh, stroke rehabilitation and when we proceed with stroke rehabilitation and provide involved uh, in hospital stroke care and even at community level stroke care we need to know what are the possible complications patient would uh, you would come across and how are you going to tackle them and how those post stroke complication is going to um, uh, effect on uh, the rehabilitation process and patient final outcome. So what is post-stroke complication? By definition, post-stroke complication is a medical or neurological condition which necessitate the physician's involvement or require medical staff involvement in monitoring and management. So these complications are heterogeneous in onset. They, they are like uh, there can be one or two or three complications come in one particular time and affect in a different ways. So they are very uh, transient. Some of these complications, they appear and disappear after a while and they can reappear again. And if you look at the whole picture, there are independent risk factors for these type of post stroke complications, which is well recognized around the world. Old age and the severity of the stroke are the key things which can affect the stroke complications in overall. So why do we have to talk about post-stroke complications? If you look at the prevalence of post-stroke complications, some of the prevalence studies done in, a, uh, in different uh, countries, it had shown clearly that about 95% of post-stroke post -stroke survivors will face some sort of post-stroke complication during their um, the post-stroke uh, 
lifespan. So it's quite a higher number of uh, occurrence, prevalence. And during the acute stroke care unit uh, management or during the stay in an acute stroke unit, some of them, uh, the, the prevalence will be around 45, 40, 40 to 45%. So it is very high, it has shown very high prevalence among post stroke patients. And it is one of the key challenging um, issues in stroke rehabilitation, which has definite negative impact on the rehabilitation and functional outcome. And uh, it, has, it has also had shown that mortality and morbidities clearly depend on the post-stroke complications. As you all know, that stroke itself during acute period, yes, the stroke itself can give rise to uh, higher mortality and morbidity. But once the acute stage is passed, the whole uh, the mortality and morbidity is depend on different type of post-stroke complications. So it is very important to know what are these complications and you should be able to identify them and uh, act, act very fast to minimize the uh, implications of post-stroke complications on mobility and mortality. So if you look at the post-stroke complications, how they develop, and if you look at the simple uh, flow in two different ways one is due to direct brain injury the other one is related to the impairment of stroke so what are the direct brain injury related complications hemorrhagic transformation cerebral edema and seizures they all are directly related to the brain damage there are certain other complications which occur as a consequence of the associated impairments what are those now, venous thromboembolism, infections, and UTI and aspiration, asp UTI and aspiration pneumonia, spasticity, falls, skin integrity and pressure sores, uh, uh, other psychiatric or stroke psychiatric or neuropsychiatric conditions, they all are related to the impairments or functional disabilities related to uh, stroke. So if you look at the brain injury related uh, complications are clearly related with the clearly associated with the uh, acute neurological deterioration so it is one category the whole um, conditions comes under uh, umbrella term early neurological deterioration that is one of the key complication of post-stroke period it is literally occur in the very early stage of the disease when at, uh, either uh, immediately after a stroke or during the first few days. So early uh, neurological deterioration is, is happening in the early stage and it's common after an acute strokes. They are associated with high increased mortality. As I told you earlier, due to uh, the initial mortality of a stroke is mainly related with this early neurological deterioration. How do they occur? It is mainly due to the direct neurological insult. One common thing is hemorrhagic transformation of an infarction. If there's a large infarction due to various cytokine activities and metabolic reasons or related to drugs, those infarcted area can get, can develop bleeding in that infarcted area so that is called hemorrhagic transformation of infarction which give rise to early de neurological deterioration low gcs and later they can die the other activity uh, other things are cc activity that can be related to the the uh, acute brain damage or it, uh, the other one is cerebral edema due to large infarctions especially large middle cerebral artery infarctions give rise to significant amount of edema sometimes in posterior circulation in the posterior com the, uh, the compact areas when there's large infarction there will be an associated significant cerebral edema which give rise to burn brain hair herniation and death so these all these are 
are part of this early neurological deterioration. And there are certain other non-neurological conditions which give rise to this early deterioration. Those are different abnormal physiological parameters, including hyponatremia and uh, thalamic related injuries. They all give rise to different neurological deterioration during the very early stage of the post-stroke period. Now, how, uh, how are we going to manage and uh, change the outcome? Uh, these factors are reversible. These all these uh, brain uh, in the brain injury related activities or complications are potentially reversible, but you have to identify them early and act accordingly. So you have to have a very uh, uh, planned and very uh, accurate monitoring system, and you should have anticipation by knowing the possible risk factors and if you anticipate them and if you have a very good uh, monitoring system then you will be able to identify this early deterioration at the uh, at the early stage then you can act accordingly depending on the complication so it has shown that uh, the evidence has clearly shown that uh, 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 if you manage an acute stroke patient, at least selected high risk patients in an ATN mortality associated with associated with uh, uh, early neurological deterioration. Another important uh, complication is venous thromboembolism. Venous thromboembolism is another common potentially life threatening condition. The post-stroke venous thromboembolism has shown different uh, postulations and different mechanism how that can occur. One is the loss of muscle pump and blood stasis in a paralytic limb can give rise to deep vein thrombosis. That is one mechanism. The other one is prolonged immobilization if the patient uh, immobilized for a longer period. The other thing is underlying prothrombotic conditions. There are certain number of prothrombotic conditions give rise to stroke. So the certain, the same uh, prothrombotic conditions can give rise to venous thromboembolism. So there will be an interrelation be, inter, uh, the relationship between uh, stroke as well as the prothrombotic conditions. There are two different, uh, the, there are two main uh, type of venous thromboembolism we see in uh, post-stroke patients. One is deep vein thrombosis, uh, that is blood flows form deep veins or paralytic uh, low, uh, limbs. The other one is uh, pulmonary embolism. Uh, that is the clot embolized to lungs and causing quite devastating consequences. Venous thromboembolism, signs and symptoms of pulmonary embolism is one key thing that we have to identify because we have to act accordingly to minimize mortality. The sudden onset pleuritic chest pain, shortness of breath, tachycardia, and you know the classical symptoms of pulmonary embolism. But it is quite commonly mistake pulmonary embolism with pneumonia in acute stroke settings. One thing is patients uh, sometimes have difficulty in communication, so they may not be able to uh, give the accurate history. So it is predominantly uh, clinical judgment and then based on investigation. So you may have, have a very high clinical suspicion. Uh, for early diagnosis and appropriate management of pulmonary embolism. So how usage of prophylactic anticoagulation in post-stroke patients still remains controversial. Most of the guidelines have clearly shown that they do not recommend a universal usage of uh, prophylaxis, uh, prophylaxis anticoagulation for each and every cases. So depending on the clinical decisions, if the clinician feels that the patient has a higher risk of uh, thromboembolism and more than the bleeding then obviously you have to uh, start them on anticoagulation prophylaxis 
However, if we feel that the patient has a risk of bleeding, especially if it's a large infarction, and if there's a history of bleeding into uh, infarcted area, then you have to be a little cautious. The other option is mechanical DVT prophylaxis, uh, which is more popular among clinicians because it doesn't cause any bleeding or side effects. But if you look at the evidence, the graduated compression stockings, which we use very commonly among our patients, is not very beneficial. If you look at the statistics, what they recommend is intermittent pneumatic compression, which is which we do not use very frequently among our setups. Another uh, complication is infection after stroke. That is very common. Most of our post-stroke survivors will face a different type of infections at different stage of their uh, stroke rehabilitation. The commonest are the pneumonia and urinary tract infection. The pneumonia again, the aspiration pneumonia is the commonest. So, uh, often attributed to post-stroke neurological impairments, motor paralysis, immobilization, incontinence and dysphagia are the key risk factors to develop either pneumonia or urinary tract infections. The other possibility, other um, the reason is stroke induced immunological impairment. Sometimes the patient, the, the, there are research evidence to show that the immunity goes down with acute stroke, even in the chronic stroke stages. So it is one reason for stroke patients to develop different infections. Old age and associated comorbidities, especially diabetes and other comorbidities, has a higher risk of higher risk for development of infections and infections is a single important factor for poor outcome and increased mortality pneumonia is the commonest infection after stroke incidence is three to twelve percent in different uh, populations aspiration is the main risk and uh, uh, why aspiration it is obvious that most most of them have uh, swallowing difficulties and this itself can give rise to aspiration even if we feed them with nasogastric tubes and uh, the other possibility uh, is uh, the risk for aspiration is low conscious level uh, and the clinical the diagnosis is predominantly based on clinical assessment sometimes radiological and microbiological analysis would help so in the management there is enough evidence to uh, support that empirical antimicrobial therapy based on local microbiological recommendations should be started at early stage which will definitely minimize the life-threatening complications so even with, uh, without waiting for microbiological analysis we should start empirical anti uh, microbial therapy based on local microbiological recommendations. Urinary tract infections. Commonest infections are in stroke survivors. Incidence is again three to nine. Bladder dysfunction is one of the most important risk factor for UTI. Other risk factors of UTI is the female sex, age, stroke, severity, poor cognition, cognitive functions, and catheterization. So the, the more the important thing in urinary tract infection is the clinical symptoms and signs are very subtle. Most of the time they are non-specific, and these symptoms and uh, uh, are very frequent. So we have to have a very high degree of clinical suspicion to make diagnosis in st early stages. And timely diagnosis and prompt treatment is essential. So post-stroke epilepsy is another uh, complication which we see in stroke survivors. Incidence and prevalence rates are highly variable. It can be around 3.5 to 6.5. Brain parenchyma gets damaged due to the stroke, uh, infarction or hemorrhage. Then there will be a scar. So there will be a permanent structural abnormality. As a result of scar parenchyma or that's permanent structural abnormality there will be constant 
irregularities in the brain electric activity which give rise to seizures this can happen at very early stage or at very late stage so at any point of their post stroke period people will uh, get we can get post stroke epilepsy uh, so this post stroke epilepsy is commonly seen among subarachnoid hemorrhagic patients ich and large volume cortical infarctions more than the other lacuna strokes independent risk factor for one this is one of the um, key independent risk factor for mortality the post stroke epilepsy diagnosis is again based on clinical assessment after an incident you should know how to evaluate whether this episode is a seizure activity or syncopal attack or uh, inconclusive type of attack so you have to have a very thorough uh, clinical evaluation to make the diagnosis of seizures in post stroke patients once you make a diagnosis of stroke uh, post stroke seizure then uh, you have to start them on profi uh, secondary prophylaxis or so seizure preventive medications anti epileptic drugs post stroke spasticity is a very common problem we see in stroke patients and more than the previous uh, complications stroke spasticity is directly affected to the stroke rehabilitation process so we should know how to assess them how to prevent them and how to treat them so incidence of post stroke spasticity for 3 to 4 or 12 months is around 17 to 43 in a, one of the uh, community based study which uh, we have conducted a small uh, uh, study in a in ratnapura and found to have uh, post stroke spasticity uh, at 6 months it was 21% Risk factors we identified are brain stem strokes, hemorrhagic strokes, younger age, and initial severity of the stroke. If NIH score is very high, then the higher chances of developing post stroke spasticity at six months. Impact of post stroke spasticity is one important thing which we have to uh, emphasize because spasticity itself affect the different state, different problems in the stroke the spasticity has abnormal symptoms discomfort stiffness and painful spasms they have a bad impact on the post stroke uh, patient and there will be functional problems like mobility transferring activities of daily living and sexual activity so spasticity directly affect these functions as a result, they get emotional impact as well. Low mood, self-image and lack of motivation. And later on, as a result of spasticity, they develop complications like shortening of muscles and contractures. So when should we treat post-stroke spasticity? There is a huge argument that spasticity is a beneficial element more than the, um, the negative effect. Some people say, the if especially at low uh, in lower limbs if there's uh, element of spasticity there will be a increased um, mobility and functional outcome however the even though there is an argument controversy on that if you look at the data and scientific evaluation it has shown that uh, very early stages yes there is a positive impact of um, Spasticity to maintain tone and mobility. However, later on, once it becomes a problem, then we have to treat it, and treatment has a definite benefit. So, if you treat them appropriately, the, then you can improve the mobility and activities of daily living and care burden on quality of life of the patient. Sometimes, even if the mild post stroke spasticity if it affecting to the most important functionally important areas let's say 
finger flexors are affected as a result of stroke spasticity, then the treatment of finger flexors is very, very important to improve the functional outcome. So how are we going to manage post-stroke spasticity? It's depending on the severity of, severity of the spasticity. If it's mild spasticity, physical therapy and oral medications would help. If the spasticity is severe and affecting their and not responding to oral medications, then we have to think about focal treatment with botulinum toxins and other therapy, intrathecal baclofen and phenol, uh, intrathecal phenol therapy, or else surgical options, especially if they, de if they have developed contractions. So the approach has to be multidisciplinary again, and depending on the severity and the response we have to step up the treatment in this type of uh, treatment ladder pressure source after stroke is another important complications which is very common and very badly affected to patients hygiene functional outcome and care burden so we need to know how to prevent it more than treat it. So the prevention is key, especially in pressure sores. So stroke patients in high risk groups, we have to identify. And uh, there are certain disease related and patient related factors. So severity of the neurological disability, old age, diabetes, uh, and peripheral vascular disease are key risk factors which have uh, clearly shown a link with pressure sores. The prevention is more important in pressure sores. So positioning and pressure care has significant significant impact on minimizing the development of pressure sores. So what we have to do is turning them, positioning them properly and uh, look after the pressure points carefully to minimize the impact and developing pressure sores. Other key area is post-stroke psychological conditions, which is very common among uh, stroke survivors because the disability happens very suddenly. They lose one or two or one or many of their functions uh, very suddenly. So obviously patients will go into a psychological disturbance. And as a result of that, they will develop different variety of psychological conditions, including depression, anxiety, emotionalism, and cognitive impairment. If you look at the statistics, it will be like more than 50% of stroke patients have uh, can develop depression at some point of their stroke. So it is a very high prevalence rate. And unfortunately, it has had shown clear association between higher mortality and disability rates, poor quality of life, and impaired personal relationships. So it is important to predict psychological conditions, who can develop post-stroke depression and other psychological conditions. So if you look at the predictors, the severity of the stroke, functional disability, and past history of depression are the key. So if you know these things, you can predict and you can intervene early. Depression itself is the main risk factor for anxiety after a stroke. Sorry about the mistake in the uh, typing. And cognitive impairment is common after stroke. Uh, it can affect specific cognitive domains such as language and maybe global, depending on the disease involvement, the involved area of the brain they can develop different cognitive patterns uh, depending on the involved domains. Post-stroke psychological conditions, again, the clinicians involved in the care should be able to diagnose accurately at early stages. And uh, every stroke care team, the rehabilitation team or the multidisciplinary team should be comprised with a dedicated psychologist or psychiatrist. So their involvement, their assessment, and their opinion is very, very important in the holistic approach of management of these post-stroke patients.
uh, and another important thing it had shown that non pharmacological interventions are very very important in management of post stroke psychological conditions so liberal use of antidepressant considered in depression anxiety and emotionalism which had shown clear benefits on rehabilitation outcomes now there are certain studies which, was, which have been done uh, years ago had shown that fluoxetine and other ssris and the usage without going for uh, formal psychiatric assessment or um, depression use in depression tools and various things even if they are randomly uh, as uh, universally used uh, SSRIs among stroke rehabilitation patients, then there is clear evidence to show that the rehabilitation outcomes will improve. So there is a positive impact on uh, stroke rehabilitation. However, what we recommend is to do a proper formal psychiatric or psychological anxiety then definitely we have to treat them with uh, medication and that has that will definitely improve the final outcome the post-stroke pain is another key thing which patients will complain more than any of the other um, complications pain especially pain in shoulder and uh, central stroke pain syndrome, post-stroke shoulder pain, those are the key things which we see very commonly among stroke survivors, even at community level, acute uh, rehabilitation setting as well. Other common uh, painful conditions are spasticity-related pain, tension headache, and uh, yeah, those things. Post-stroke pain, again, careful clinical assessment is needed like in any other condition. And we have to identify the underlying cause if we can appropriate treatment depending on the underlying causes. Multidisciplinary team involvement, especially during hospital stay and after discharge, uh, need to be aware of these problems. But very rarely we may need specialist referrals to manage pain after stroke. There are certain other minor post-stroke complications. They, if we, even though if I say they are minor, the impact can be huge and it, they are not very uh, uncommon as well. Uh, post-stroke fatigue, post-stroke insomnia, false after stroke, they all are common conditions which has a huge negative impact on post-stroke uh, management and rehabilitation. So, um, we have to identify these complications to identify them at early stages we should know the potential complications and the potential risk factors so once we know the risk factors and we uh, we can identify them early we can anticipate the possible post complications and then we can manage them appropriately at early stages um, so if you look at the prognosis after stroke, stroke is the second leading cause of death across the globe. Number of causes for adult disability. It's the number one cause for the disability and it is second for death across the globe. So it's quite common and has a very negative impact on the socioeconomic and the health statistics. So more than 75% of patients with acute stroke will survive one year and five year survival is around 50%. The key, the most important thing is majority of these patients uh, or significant portion of these patients are disabled. They survive with disabilities. So there will be a huge social and economical impact from that. So the prognosis of stroke depending on the certain predictive factors. So the research and community studies had shown that poor prognosis and delayed rehabilitation will depend on the severity of the neurological damage. If the damage is high, the prognosis is poor and rehabilitation outcome will be delayed. Initial functional impairment. There are certain tools which we use to assess the functional impairment. If the impairment is more, the prognosis and the rehabilitation outcome will be poor. 
presence of post stroke depressive disorders urinary incontinence are key other key things in addition there will be non neurological factors which will affect the prognosis after a stroke what are those age socio economic background family support and previous personality types obviously by looking at them we feel that older age has negative impact on the prognosis and the functional outcome socio economic background again the same especially with the disability and the acute disability and prolonged disability there has to be a very good support from the carers and the family to have a, to achieve a good uh, rehabilitation outcome so family support is another important area and previous personality type there are certain number of patients has very negative thoughts they get disturbed very easily and that will directly affect the rehabilitation process and outcome will be poor uh, positive impact on care rehabilitation and survival the advancement in acute stroke care development of rehabilitation more importantly positive attitude shift is the key thing uh, what we really aim is a positive attitude shift now we know that uh, if we can develop a positive attitude towards stroke care stroke rehabilitation then obviously we can achieve a very good outcome at the end through this rehabilitation processes and stroke unit care so thank you very much and it's a very brief overview of post stroke complications um, and i hope that you will get a basic idea of identifying and uh, managing these post stroke complications obviously if you run and if you treat post stroke patients regularly you need a more comprehensive uh knowledge on these things but i have given you a basic overview so thank you very much um thank you very much uh champika uh, for that very informative talk on uh, complications and prognostication of uh, stroke so i think uh, uh, generally uh, there were no questions uh, throughout the lecture yeah. series so uh, Uh, so uh, let me conclude uh, by asking all uh, doctors that who went through training uh, to join uh, the training the uh, to join the uh, online um, training program workshop tomorrow morning at 9 am so if there's any problem you could post it at the chat now so that uh, i'll be able to i mean in the sense that i'm asking that if there is if you do not know how to get the link or if there hadn't been any communication with regard to tomorrow's workshop or any questions that you want to know uh, please you could post them in the chat now so that i'll be able to answer and also that we have shared the link for the book the hard copy that will be available for about a month for you for you to use it and uh, uh, then after that that will get deactivated and by, i mean by in about another month or so the hard copy of the book would be available so that be in touch uh, that we'll be able to let you have the book uh, so i'm join uh, tomorrow morning at, uh, at 9 am uh, for the uh, on the virtual workshop uh, until then thank you very much shantika for this uh, great lecture thank you for all trainees who were with an interest in stroke rehabilitation and for joining um for the work, uh, for the uh, so series of zoom lectures thank you stay safe thank you madam